you're like me, you have a bin full of these. I'm tired of rebuying these year after year. I want to get back to the way things used to be, when people made their own decorations. So my wife made this probably about 10 years ago in one of those drink wine and craft. And here we are, 10 years later, this thing still looks good. Home Depot wants to charge $100 for these little three foot deer, but I'm gonna start out with some three quarter inch plywood and see what I can come up with. Always filling it to the brim. I went on to Etsy and purchased some of these silhouette cutouts, but I really didn't want to print out a full size template, tape it all together. That seemed like a lot of work. Um, so I created a PDF file, printed it out in Photoshop, and then traced it onto some uh, Ziploc bags. I saw on another YouTube channel where someone made a projector out of a cardboard box using their iPhone. Um, and that's the route I went. It seemed like a lot easier than printing everything out. And now on to the fun part, which was actually cutting this thing out. Uh, this was probably the, the most tedious part here, especially the trees. There was just so many little cuts you had to make. I think the end result was really worth it though, taking the time to really make these little tiny cuts. I use the Black Friday deals as an excuse to buy myself a brand new jigsaw. This thing is nice, although I did cut into my table a little bit. I was initially only going to do one tree, but I decided to go back to Home Depot and get some half inch material and make two more trees. So I just traced the other tree onto the board. The half inch material doesn't cut great. It was kind of split in the wood. So I decided to try out my router and see if that was any better. Uh, it did get a little squirrely on me. It worked alright for the tree, but I wouldn't do it for any type of uh, accurate cuts. Here I'm taking off uh, a couple inches off the bottom so the trees kind of stand at different heights. You gotta love the oopsie paint. Always check your clearance sections. Look at that. Two dollars. I decided to use pressure treated 2x4 so I'd have a nice solid base for this thing. The plan here was to build a slot system where each decoration would slide in um, and you could rearrange them however you wanted to. If I could do it again I probably would want 10 feet wide instead of 8 feet um, just to give the decorations a little more separation. For this first cross brace I used uh, pocket holes and glue because it's the main support holding the whole thing together. The rest of them, I just screwed them in from the side. I'm using wood glue to hold the main bracket on because I want to get a lot of years out of these things. I'm using one inch drywall screws here, uh, mainly as just a clamp to hold the wood on till the glue dries because eventually they are going to rust. The wood glue that I'm using is the Tight Bond 3 um, because I'm told I guess it's waterproof, so we'll see how it holds up. I'm using two and a half inch deck screws to hold the slot 2x4s to the main bracket.
This is a side view of the slot system. You can see how it just kind of slides in. Quarter inch gap for the plywood. And that actually helps give it a little more support, keep it standing upright so it doesn't lean. So this is what the final result looks like. With the price of plywood the way it is, it kind of crushed my soul to throw some scrap away. So I decided to use these cut off tree pieces uh, as grass. I painted it green with this uh, camouflage paint just to kind of sell the effect better. This is why I don't recommend the half inch plywood. This is already broken. So the plan is to be able to reuse these like year after year and then hopefully add additional ones every year till I have like this giant collection of them. I used an inch and a quarter drywall screws to attach my lights. So I had my eye on those uh, permanent outdoor lights for a while and Lumerie reached out to me and asked if I'd like to try their new uh, permanent lights and I was like, uh, yes please. <laughs> so uh, they sent a, a box out to me and these things are really cool. So the manufacturer recommends uh, mounting these about 12 inches from the house to get maximum brightness on the house. But I ended up tying them into the, the fascia board. It's less of a kind of spotlight look and more of just like a diffuse light. So when the color gradient changes from light to light, you can't really tell where one light starts and one, the other light ends. Each individual light comes with its own little bracket and each bracket has 3M tape. So once I applied the light with the tape and had it where I wanted it, uh, I would then come back with a screw to finish it off. is cool. I love the color changing. So cool. And the app lets you customize about 20 different effects with any kind of light color you want. It's pretty cool. I did this Headless Horseman one kind of as a proof of concept to see how it would turn out. Uh, and it turned out so cool I decided to move forward with all the Christmas ones. Home Depot had this tree for $180. And it only had 600 lights on it. I think we can do better than that. So I'm going to attempt to build one bigger and brighter using this uh, 3 quarter inch conduit with these couplings. So the plan here is to drill a hole, 2x4, to go around the post. Uh, and then these guys, these hooks that I bought, are going to go into 2x4 all the way around. And these are what I'm going to hook my lights to. 2x4 is going to be on a pulley where I can pull it, hoist it up into the air on the pole. That's the, that's the plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. These are gonna connect my three pieces of pipe. On the top is gonna get this pulley. 
And then I'm gonna, I can hoist the lights up after I'm done. Using the scrap plywood, I wanna make a star. Well, there you have it, my ugly little star. All right, this is gonna be real gangster style here. I think I'm gonna zip tie this on here. That'll work. All right, this is some real redneck engineering here, but let's see if it works. I pre-drilled holes for all my hooks. There you have it, my redneck contraption. All right, I had this, uh, I think it's two and a half inch, just PVC laying around, so bury this in the ground. This is what's gonna hold my tree up. And if you're going to be digging, know where you're digging, um, call 811 if you have to. Um, I've lived in this house for 20 years now, so I've cut three cable lines and cut about four sprinkler lines over the years, so I'm an expert by now. <laughs> Joy to the world. Very uneventful. All right, so I really need to temper my uh, expectations with this thing. I initially wanted to go 30 feet, but 30 feet is freaking up there. So uh, I think I'm just gonna go 15 and try to weld my, uh, my joint because it's getting really floppy at that joint. You can see it's got a bend to it. That joint is just not holding the supporting the weight. So I'm gonna have to make this thing Shorter. Honestly, if I were to do this again, I would probably just buy like a 25 foot flagpole for, I've seen them on Amazon for less than a hundred bucks, save myself a big headache. As you can see, I'm an expert welder. All right, this is where we're at with this thing. You had to use a dowel. So I just cut 45s on the ends with my miter saw, made little stakes. So I got kind of a gap right here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but so all I got to do is lower the lights down, add more lights, raise it back up. That's the great thing about this. So there's your finished product. I added three more, 300 more lights. So we're now at 1500 lights.